Hello everyone, Brad Johnson here, and in this video I have a very exciting topic that we're going to discuss. It's called Dream Matrix Following the White Rabbit. So, looking into dreams, as I've talked about in several videos uh, throughout my YouTube channel history, this is something that's a little bit more different. Just last night, I had a really incredible download awakening experience. And it was something that was so intense, it wasn't something that I could even recollect in comparison, similar to that that uh, occurred in uh, 2008, during the time of my awakening. But in 2008, I had many of these really intense download states. I would go to sleep at night, and I would start interacting in this type of non-physical classroom. And I would basically have these rays of light that were my teacher. So it's kind of like just seeing these, but kind of like they were moving in a three-dimensional form. And I was just getting this incredible surge of energy. In fact, it was very, very hard to go back to sleep after having a lot of these download states because it was so intense. Uh, just being able to get all of this information, uh, quote-unquote, assimilated into you all at once. Well, this is basically what happened to me last night here, of course, at the time of this recording, 2016 or December, is going to sleep. I was basically being bombarded by a lot of some subconscious thoughts. So I'll just refer to that as the SCT, subconscious thoughts. Just a lot of different forms of, it's almost like you can see after images or afterthoughts or echoes of particular uh, degrees of, you could say, dramatic situations, people like arguing or demanding things of you or having expectations of you. And it felt like I was just being clouded with a lot of that kind of subconscious debris in that way, the subconscious thoughts. But there was a point where I just composed myself and I just basically said, be gone. Just like taking my hands and just throwing all of that particular subconscious thought debris aside. You're very, very similar to the entity that many of us know as Bashar would refer to as, and I hope I'm spelling this right, but it would be what I could call Shivai. It was like a Shivai moment. So basically, for those of us, many of us, I'm sure, watching this channel as well too, are very familiar with this expression, which basically uh, the entity Bashar has referred to as one who is on their path, one who is in their alignment, one who is completely in their own authentic energy, and telling uh, everybody else, stand aside, I'm coming through. Right? That's basically what it felt like just following this spark of authenticity, this white light that I again nicknamed as the white rabbit. So to borrow the Alice in Wonderland term, that's again kind of the close analogy here. And as that happened, it felt like this large spark, again, this white rabbit energy, was now just instantly connecting to a uh, connecting directly, uh, attaching itself to my heart chakra. And I literally felt like I was being positively electrocuted. <laughs> That's what it felt like. It was just a rush. It was like having, uh, again, thousands of years of memories, thousands of years of experience just being rushed into you at once. That's exactly what it felt. It was so incredible. I could actually feel it in my body. It felt like my body was going through a, a warp in that way. It just felt like it was basically contorting itself, not physically in that way, but it felt like that from within. And I remember after this happened, I just woke up and it was really, really hard to go back to sleep after that. I was up for about an hour, an hour and a half before I could try and doze off again. But this was really showing me something incredible, showing me something that we have the capability to, again, create that type of Shivai moment. And what this really entails is that we're just attempting to master 
our own ability to work with our drain matrix. So if we're looking into the drain matrix here as this grid, whenever we enter the dream grid or the dream matrix, these little X's I'm putting here are basically columns that we can often find within the dream plane that represent subconscious debris. So if we were able to look at an extremely massive grid, we'd probably see about 90 to 95, maybe even 98 percent of this grid compact with subconscious garbage or subconscious junk. Really, it just has to do with traumas. It has to do with, again, thought forms. It has to do with belief systems. It has to do with, again, expectations, conditions we place upon ourselves. And it's just all of these different things. Now, it's true that we can certainly have a lot of good positive uh, stuff involved in the dream grid. And that's great because that's basically us being able to take a lot of the uh, subconscious debris, the junk, and attempt to transform it into positive alignments. So the idea where we can feel like we're flying in a dream. And we've been, we've been able to work with a lot of the aspects of dreams that may have been nightmarish, feeling that we've been encountering people in the dream state that were trying to threaten us or fight us, whatever it may be, and we've worked uh, aspects of peace into those areas where there's been victimization, abuse, whatever it may be. And we've cleansed those areas utilizing the references of these circles. But again, it's a very, very small part of the dream plane. Now this is not something that is going to happen right away. When you're working with your dream matrix, uh, for me, I've been documenting dreams for over eight years, and I know there's people out there who've been doing it 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years plus, no doubt. But the whole idea in that sense is not so much about the length of time that you're doing it, but the understanding that you're receiving while you're actually documenting your dreams, while you're being aware of the flow. There's just gonna come a point where you'll just snap and you'll just click and you'll say I'm developing myself as a lucid being in dream state and I'm putting all of this aside it's like you're just standing up you're making yourself big you're making yourself larger than the dream plane itself and that any of these particular forms of threatening energies or threatening subconscious thought forms that come together it's almost like they just they're just still like whoa <laughs> right? You basically come back into your creator essence. You basically tell, you know, all of those subconscious aspects of yourself, I am the creator of this reality. This dream matrix belongs to me. This is my space, right? That's basically what happened to me last night. It was just being able to go again into that Shivai moment and just say, I am following my path of authenticity. I am in my state of love step back, I'm coming through, right? That was my entire experience and having this incredible download that came through. Uh, when I had that incredible download early this morning, uh, I just started doing some simple meditations and my clairvoyance, the, uh, the ability of the third eye now, I'll just you know, <laughs> create something on me here, has basically just skyrocketed. It almost feels like 300%. I just close my eyes right now and I can now start seeing different dimensions. I can see portals. I can start seeing different patterns and, uh, you know, all of these incredible forms of uh, hyperspatial uh, visualizations. And again, I know probably there's quite a lot of people out there who can also do the same thing. But just speaking on my behalf, my behalf quite incredible. Just going into simple meditations, two, three minutes, and just poof, within seconds, seeing these incredible vistas, these landscapes, these hyperspatial dimensional uh, phenomena coming through. And that's what I feel is just being able to notice that going through this kind of Shivai moment has really taken out a lot of these particular forms of Xs. It's basically that we're going through a type of dream detoxification. What I have likened it to, again, as we are Definitely attempting to align with the white rabbit. We're not attempting to chase it all around because we'd be chasing forever. 
We're basically attempting to become the alignment of the white rabbit. We're becoming the alignment of our natural authenticity, hence the aspect of the reference. Basically, when we're looking at all of this, I, uh, I joked with my partner, I said, I think this could best be preferred to look at it as gluten. We have a gluten-filled dream space. And, you know, there's so much of a craze about gluten-free diets on the planet. So what if we went into emotional gluten and discovered exactly how much emotional gluten we digest or try to digest on a daily basis? So again, as I'll call it, daily energy gluten. Another analogy I was basically getting was the feeling of filler. Because that is all this is. This entire subconscious aspect, this entire subconscious game about how we have invented modern society, about how we continue to worry about things, about how we continue to criticize each other, about minuscule aspects that have nothing to do really with our entire enlightening development. It's all gluten. It's all filler garbage. That's what it is. And so the whole idea here is being able to really, again, come into our power. And just, again, going into the dream state and knowing that if we're starting to go through these subconscious turmoils again, oh, no, my, my God, I feel horrible about money. Money is not coming in. And so I'll have horrible money dreams or the feeling that I'm impoverished or feeling that I don't have enough money, that I'm stranded somewhere, that I'm incapable of fixing something. We dive right into the loop. We just jump right in, right? But when we actually start to take time or we start to document our dreams, when we start looking and saying that, you know, day one, I had, again, money problems, MP, problems with money. Day two came up, I was having, again, more financial issues. Day three came up, uh, again, it was something about mortgage. And I just kept dreaming about all these things, losing my house, losing my car, repossession, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff comes together. And that takes all of our focus. That's our entire processing power of navigating the dream space and the dream matrix is by putting so much energy into this. We are completely missing the point. We are completely overcome by gluten, by filler, right? And it's not just the dream plane. It's this plane as well, too. It's the physical plane. Physical plane is just like the dream plane as well. We worry and we worry and we obsess and we go crazy about just these things that we personally create. And again, this is where we really just put so much of our true empowerment into that state of disempowerment. We go into this matrix, we see these X's here, and we just jump right back into the mess. And it's being able to know that I want to work together with the dream plan. I want to work together with my matrix. I want to understand more about the grid that represents my own dream plane, that represents the type of criteria that I explore in the dream plane. Once you understand that, once you get the clue, you'll have that Shivai moment. You'll just go big. And that's what it felt like. It just felt like everything around me was just tiny. And I would just put my hands out clear the path, step aside, be gone, right? And then just being able to follow this white spark and having this incredible download that came through. And again, this, you know, it, just, it all depends. It's not about, you know, a time limit or, you know, how long is this going to take, Brad, for me to actually do this? Uh, for me, it's taken eight years. But for some people, maybe it could be done in two, maybe it can be done in three, maybe it can be done in 20. Who knows? The whole idea here in that sense is that we have the capability to do this. We simply need to look into the idea of the dreamscape and find out, just listen to what it's telling us, because it's all just relating back to what we're going through on a daily basis. It's all just playing with smokes and mirrors. That's it. We're playing with smoke. We're playing with mirrors. We're playing with reflection. We're playing with memory. Seeing that if we have problems within life, problems within the awoken reality, we'll carry that into the dream plane. We'll make that part of the dream reality. 
and we're just continuing to go through this rat race over and over and over and over again. So when we start to go into the dream matrix and we start to clean these up, so again, we, we repolarize them into something positive and we start clearing this grid, not 100%, but to the point where we have like an open space. It's kind of like we're looking at this area here is quite open. That's enough space to feel that I'm able to really become this kind of dream administrator again. I'm able to see myself as this point of creator. And so I look at all of these distortions and say, enough. And then they just stop. Whoa, what is happening here? What's, what's he doing? We're, we're trying to talk to him. Be gone, right? And it just, they, do, they obey, right? It's all your creations and they just leave. And all that is left, it's kind of like seeing the fog uh, parting away from a bed and you see this beautiful gem just lying there or you see the white rabbit just lying there and then you bond with that white rabbit. You bond with that gem and you just feel this surge. You just feel this incredible energy that just flows through you. And what I could best describe it as is just feeling this incredible heart chakra experience. And that's where it was. It was right here. And again, it was like feeling that you were being positively, positively electrocuted. <laughs> that's the closest analogy I can really put in regards to this. Just feeling like you're just being zapped with all of this etheric energy, this cosmic energy just blasting through you. And it was so intense. Again, I just woke up for an hour, an hour and a half, could not go back to sleep. I was buzzing with so much energy. And um, <clears throat> I was just talking about my dream and saying, hey, you know what? We just, you know, everybody's, everybody's crazy about gluten. Well, this is it. You know, we got, we got energetic gluten. We got thought gluten. We got memory gluten. Let's start going through an amazing, you know, energetic gluten detoxification. And that's exactly what the dream plane represents here, is that we just take all of this debris from everything that we understand, from everything that we witness in this plane, and bring it with us. And it will just start to re-dramatize itself, re-intensify itself. And it does that because it's attempting to snap us out. We've never actually even experienced the actual truth about why we dream. We dream so that we don't have to dream anymore. That's the whole idea. When you basically have a complete grid like this, and there is no X's and O's, nothing at all, your dream space is completely clear. You will not have to dream anymore at all, period. Dreams are a gauge. They are a messaging system in that way. They basically show you what you're still holding on to in the alive, living world, in the awoken world. And it's showing you how it can be bypassed. When you finally have that state of harmony, you are just full of so much energy because there's no processing power that's taking you to another level, to taking you to an area where you have to go into the dream and just burn yourself out with memory. There's so much more once you get into this clear grid. That's what's so exciting about this. This is why when I've looked into a lot of uh, information as it relates to extraterrestrials, to a lot of beings that have, again, graduated past their own planet, many of them don't even sleep anymore. Or at best, they may take a half an hour, an hour, just to rest or meditate in that way, and that is considered to be their sleep. But there are those who don't even sleep anymore. Why is that? They've cleaned their grid. They've been completely detoxified of any form of energetic memory, life gluten, right? That's been completely removed. It's like looking at these particular forms of TV shows that have been filler episodes, where they're not canon to the actual story. They're just you know, filler episodes to try and fill up the season's quota, right? Well, that basically represents, again, all of these particular forms of thought forms, all of this debris within ourselves. They're fillers, you know, and the dream gets filled with this gunk, gets filled with this, you know, debris of memory that is telling us how much we suck, how much we're worthless, or we have no form of value, or that we're jealous of this person, or we're judgmental about this person, we're aggressive, we're angry, we're upset. Oh, we have to sleep. 
We have so much crap <laughs> in the nicest way possible. We have so much crap inside of us relating to all of this modern society dribble through the idea of these programs. We become exhausted. Again, I just wish I could point a camera to another planet, you know, because not just from Adronus, but just from a lot from what I've received from higher mind connection as well, too. So many other beings just don't go through this. I mean, they look at their days and they're just thrilled. There's excitement, there's peace, there's just, they work so much with the idea of subtle energy, right? On an average day for a human, it's like this. You gotta sleep. You gotta dream when you have that kind of energy, right? Your dream matrix gets contaminated when you have a dream matrix like, like this. This is just insanity. Oh my God, did I pay the bills today? What about the mortgage? What about the kids? Uh, what about what if this? What if this person doesn't like me if I do this? What happens if oh, what kind of clothes should I wear today? What if I don't know? Right? And we wonder why we get so drained after the day's done. or just in the middle of the day in that way. And we just collapse. We need to go to sleep. But the thoughts, the worries don't stop. They go all the way over here. And they rebound. And they'll hit you again. And they'll keep going. And they'll keep going. You can't escape from it. right? You're not here to run from these memories. You're not here to run from these transformations that are, again, waiting to happen. This aspect of karmic debris that is constantly bonding itself. If you're not getting the point in the awoken state, by God, you will get the point in dream state. It'll become more intense and more intense. People will get nightmares. They'll get night terrors. They'll just, you know, go completely out of their mind and be afraid to sleep. Because we just keep going and we keep going and we worry and we worry and we worry and it just bounces all over the place until we're just ready to collapse. So the whole key here again, you know, it's no secret through a lot of the videos I've talked about is being able to work together with the emotions, work together with what your dream plane, with what your awoken state is attempting to tell you, is to listen and to look into those areas where there has been a great deal of distortion, preventing you from, again, aligning to the white rabbit. Following the white rabbit, again, representing the idea that you're just looking to get back on course. You're going back into your true comfort zone. You're going back upon your true path. But again, the biggest thing that causes this is this. Okay. This is worse than cancer. This is worse than anything you can possibly imagine. You start doing this, you'll have this every day. The whole idea is to completely relinquish control. Let go of it. It does not serve. Logic always wants you to establish control. For God's sakes, Joe, please get a hold of yourself. Control yourself. Control this situation. Hey, take charge. Take control of what you're doing. Hey, are you in control? That's all we hear, right? We go into the office. We go into the business world. Logic was supposed to say, control yourself, get into control. Hey, get yourself together. Get a hold of yourself. Control yourself, for God's sakes. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Control, 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 control. No, no, no. This is unnatural. Control is not a human concept. It is a machine concept. We utilize control utilizing the aspect of machines processing and attempting to assimilate, creating just these immense debris of logic that create these clouds of confusion. And we try to control everything and we can't control a damn thing. That's where again, this huge form of clustering happens in our grid, in our dream matrix. The clustering happens in our physical reality and it ports itself over to the dream plane because the dream plane is attempting to tell us, hey, this is what you're holding on to. This is the emotion that's still with you. These are the belief systems you still apply to yourself. What do we have to show you for you to let go of this, right? When you finally do that, 
and you work to have this, yeah, you won't need to dream anymore. You won't need that. This world will literally be your dream. You will just be in such an alignment. You will basically be, again, at stage four of the four stages of human spiritual evolution, which is this drawing. Okay? Remember, stage one is the pit folk. Everybody who just needs and haves and desires and craves and are in the pit, and it's the dog-eat-dog -dog world, and only the strong survive, and all that crap. <laughs> and we have number two, right? The valley folk. People who have climbed out of that hellish pit, and they're now just starting to go through the valley, and they're starting to question things. They're wondering about reality. They know there's more than the five senses, and they want to explore that further. We have the third stage, the mountain climbers, the doers. The ones who are working towards the aspect of their self-improvement. That's where you need to be when you start cleaning this grid. You're in number three. You're in stage three, relating to the four stages. Then you're up here. You're in stage four. You're the summit folk. Your I am presence. You're basically spending your whole time just basically being in a meditative state. Just feeling that it's no longer about the idea of your worries of the world feeling that you need to take responsibility for every single person on this planet, feeling that you need to save the whole world because if it's not for you, then who the hell is going to save the world? Right? It's not about that nonsense. Right? It's about the whole idea here that you're here, and it's just you looking upon this planet, being yourself, becoming the example. You are the example. Living as that example. You have no needs. You have no wants. You have no passions. You have nothing that represents the aspect of having to do anything anymore, right? It's not to say that you're being eternally apathetic. On the contrary, you are more connected to everything than you have ever been. It is bliss. And you are in that state of I am. And when you're there, it's because of this. And when you look at these ancient masters, you know, from India, from Tibet, etc., many of them are here. They are not concerned that, oh my God, Donald Trump's the U.S. president? You know, Oh my God, what's, what's Vladimir Putin doing right now? Oh my God, there's, there's prosperity funding coming? Oh, oh, nice. Right? All right, that's fine. If you guys look into that, that's cool. <laughs> no problem. Right? I even look into that stuff myself, so I, I'm not judging. <laughs> but the whole key here is that this is where they are. They're not concerned about world affairs. They couldn't care less about that. All they are here is to show the appreciation to life, feeling their connection to all things. It's really no more different than feeling this type of animalistic symbiosis, not in the form of a primal means, but in an enlightening one, where you feel the connection to the earth, where you feel the connection to all the animals, where you feel the connection to every star, you feel the connection to every galaxy. You are able to travel in hyper dimensions just by thought, you can materialize yourself on other worlds. You can materialize yourself in other dimensions. This is it. You become the living dream. You become the dream matrix. It's no longer in the idea of feeling that, well, do I have to like take my body to these places? No. Your body can just sit on a rock, right? And you're just projecting yourself into these incredible experiences. The universe is now your true teacher. It is your guru, you could say. And it's showing you everything because there's no resistance in this grid. No X's, no O's, nothing negative, nothing positive, just the silver lining. That's what it means to have that polished dream matrix without the gluten, right? The gluten-free dream matrix where you are now the white rabbit, where you are now the essence of authenticity the essence of the I am, the essence of the universe itself. This is where we can go. I'm not saying I'm in that summit folk yet. I'm still number three. I'm still climbing, right? But again, just what's happened last night, I can definitely feel that a lot of these X's <laughs> have vanished from the grid. But again, it's still an ongoing process because the whole idea is we know we're going through some incredible challenges. But that's great, everybody. It's great that we're seeing chaos on the planet. 
it's great that we're seeing these shakeups because that is showing you things are changing. If things were not changing, there would be no shakeup at all. And we'd probably be looking at something pretty nasty, right? It's very good that we have shakeup. It's very good that the earth is lighting a fire under our butts, really, to really say, get up, get off your butt. Come on, look about what's happening. Look into yourself. Where do you want to be? Look at all these emotions. Look at all these belief systems. Look at all this thought form clutter. Look at all this energetic gluten. What are you going to do about it? Right? Do we have to keep showing you things to get to make it go worse? For you to actually stand up and say, okay, no more about this nine to five job. No more about thinking that I have to do this, that, and the other thing. And, and feel that I take my whole day up and there's no time for me at all. It's not to say we have to abandon 100% of our responsibilities, but make more time for yourself on a daily basis. If that starts at five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, a couple of hours, great. Really see into your world because as you start to improve yourself, as you start to become the example, as you start looking into your dream matrix and you start seeing all of these things and realizing you have the capability of changing them by working with the emotions, now you shed this light. You broadcast this light. You project this light. Other people see it. They start inheriting that light through their own acceptance to do so. They start transforming and it starts happening more and more and more. Because if you keep panicking with the aspect of chaos, with the feeling of everything that's happening here, you're only joining these people. You're going right in here. What am I going to do? Am I going to lose my house? Am I going to do this? Am I going to lose my bank account? What's going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. And we're all going to get in there. You don't have to lose anything. But as long as you get caught up into that aspect of the pit, you feel that you're just screaming, you're just screaming your head off, and there's no escape, there's nothing you can do, well, that's what you're showing. And because the, the earth right now is at a place where the energies are so intense, the energies are so wild right now, those things come really quick. Be very mindful about what you're thinking about. Be very mindful about what you're feeling about. Because here's a little quote for you guys. Let's take a clean up some of the debris here. Something very important that we need to look at as it relates to, th to feeling and to thought. Okay. Feeling is creative. Thought is propagative. That is their roles. Thought does not create. Feeling does not propagate. So this is kind of really looking into the idea about the feelings and the thoughts themselves, about where they stand in regards to the state of their quality, their value, their integrity, their alignment, their purpose. When you know you have a really great creative feeling, take action upon it. Utilize your thoughts to propagate it. To mean, bring it to life. Bring it into material. Think of it as thought as these little nanites, these little organic nanites, right? These atoms that are just waiting to build something as soon as feeling gives the word. Here you go, Brad. Poof! Blueprint of a creative feeling. Oh, that's great. Oh, okay, hang on. Thought's coming in. Great. And we build it, right? This is how we have the greatest form of teamwork. This is, again, how you're so creative and propagative in the dream state. As soon as you get that feeling in the dream plane, that feeling, that creative aspect, feeling creates, thought propagates, bam. You get that feeling, bam. All of a sudden, it's materialized into your dream plane through thought. So this is really the key criteria in how we can work together, yes, with the dream plane, going into that state of lucidity and playing with these things, realizing we can make ourselves big, we can push aside 
all of those forms of uh, afterthoughts and thought forms. And we can also utilize this in, yes, the awoken world as well, too. That we're now starting to value this state of feeling. Because feeling is required for everything that we have created. Thought is responsible for propagating everything, manifesting everything that we have created through the aspect of our perception. So feeling will always be that non-localization. These are, again, the key ingredients to everything relating to life in creative, propagative, manifesting, experiencing reality. So play with your dream state. Be aware about what's coming together. Be aware of the themes that you're continuously dreaming about. Realize what they're attempting to say to you. Once you realize that, now you can start making yourself big. Now you can start parting those clouds, those fogs that have been distortions that are saying that you have to have all of this illusionary demand. And when you start making very big progress in the dream state, realizing you can do this, huh? I did this in the dream plane. I can now start doing this more in life, right? They always work together in relationship. That's the nature of the dream matrix. Again, the whole key here is to cleanse that grid and make it into this. And when you are doing that, you're at the summit. You are the I am presence. You are the white rabbit. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brad Johnson. Again, feel free to check out realitywhisperer.com sessions, courses, free medium, and a lot more. Thank you again, and I look forward to speaking to you in another perspective of the now. Take care, namaste, and may it be well with you. Goodbye.